my childhood did not go as planned. I showed up to kindergarten. I had my curly bleach blonde hair tied up into a ponytail. I had my toes painted, each one a different color. And like every other kindergartner there, all I wanted was friends. I'm at recess one day and I receive an invitation to join an exclusive recess club. This was gonna be it. This was gonna be my friends, my place, my space that I was gonna belong. Well, it was, till I learned a little more. Not only was this club exclusive in that it was invite only, was also exclusive by nature of their rules. Their rule was that if you wanted to be in this club, you couldn't be friends with those people. I'm in kindergarten. I've got no authority. All I want are friends. What is a person like me supposed to do? Well, I started my own club. I called it Friendship Club. And my rule was that if you wanted to be in this club, you had to be friends with everyone. A couple of years later, something terrible happened. I switched schools. I went from being the president of Friendship Club to an outcast, lost in the hallways. I, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know my way around. I was totally alone. I was the new kid. Maybe you've been in a similar situation where you're in the middle of a crowded space and there's a lot of hustle and bustle, yet you still feel alone. Fortunately, I soon found out that this new school had their own friendship club. And three girls invited me to be their friends. Their names were Sarah, Grace, and Anna. And these girls at this new school accepted everyone as they were. And by nature of this inclusive value, we were all different in our own way. And what made me the most different was that I am neurotypical. Anna has Down syndrome, Grace has DeGeorge's syndrome, and Sarah had a stroke when she was one. We fell in love with each other. This experience demonstrates what I like to call innate inclusion. Children are inclusive until they're given a reason not to be. And so we all start out this way. Being young does two things. First, it eliminates any societal barriers that limit us. And second, it eliminates societal stereotypes that divide us. We were friends because we saw each other as people. And sure, they may have walked a little different than me, and I may have talked a little different than them, but that was irrelevant because different wasn't scary. Different was interesting. Different was a conversation starter. And once that conversation started, we found out we had a lot in common. In kindergarten, we all loved the color purple and we all wanted to play hide and go seek at recess. And today, we all love an impromptu trip to the beach, and we all love cheese quesadillas from our favorite Mexican restaurant. Growing up and having these girls as some of my closest friends has made me a better person. And these differences, they've opened my eyes to a world of possibilities. I've gotten to firsthand experience 
amazing things. Amazing things that only occur when you believe in yourself and you chase after an opportunity. I've gotten to volunteer at Oceans of Hope, where I've helped paraplegic surf. I've gotten to connect with and be mentored by John Samuel, someone who is blind and is launching his own tech startup. And I've gotten to work alongside someone I'm lucky to call a friend, Matthew Schwab, who has Down syndrome and celebrated his 21st birthday with a tequila shot and then jumping out of an airplane. People can do amazing things. Years later, I found myself disappointed again. I was a freshman in college. I was looking for one of my first jobs. And even though I was in this job market, I still felt like my kindergarten self, that outcast in the hallway, being recruited by a series of exclusive clubs. Only this time it was companies. Companies where my friends weren't included. 80% of adults with disabilities are unemployed. And that 20% that sometimes does get jobs, well, they're often stuck with scarce shifts and doing unfulfilling tasks like folding napkins and cleaning the bathrooms. These exclusive clubs are not okay. So I'm a freshman. I'm just trying to get a job. I'm trying to contribute. I'm trying to convince a company to hire me. I've got no authority. What is a person like me supposed to do? Well, I started my own club. I mean, company. And my company was going to, going to be a place where all could belong and all could contribute. In kindergarten and in college, I found myself at a true impasse to be compliant and complicit with societal norms or to create new norms. And you know what they say, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But if it is broken, then do something. And I believe that if you wanna make things better, Go out and make a better thing. So I got busy. I found three other people who were just as passionate about this as I was. Michael Evans, Liam Dow, and Matthew Schwab. Remember him? He was the guy who jumped out of the airplane. The four of us came together with a dream. A dream to create and open a coffee shop that could employ people of all abilities and show what inclusion truly looks like. We envisioned a 1,500 square foot brick and mortar coffee shop right in the heart of downtown with cozy seats, a full-time staff, one of those really cool glass garage doors up front that let in a bunch of natural light. It was going to be the coffee shop of Raleigh. But shockingly, a couple of college freshmen weren't quite ready to sign a 10-year lease, and we didn't even really have the resources to get an espresso machine. So we figured out what we could do. We could reach out to a graphic design student to get one of our first logos. We could watch YouTube videos and build our first website overnight. And we could post on Facebook about what we were doing to start spreading awareness. And so we did, and it worked. And then a local news anchor ended up seeing those Facebook posts and they wanted to do a story on what we were starting. And then it felt really real. At our first event, we rented folding tables from the student union, we got Starbucks coffee, and we reached out to different adults in the area who had disabilities to see if they were interested in getting involved. And they were. We brought this setup to any event that would let us, 
and we offered to serve coffee for free. Fortunately, free coffee was pretty popular. So we did that first event, and then it was even easier to do the second and a third. And while these folding tables weren't that grand vision that we were all imagining and chasing, it was something. And that something was already making an impact. And this is the point that I think is critical. You can spend a lifetime agonizing over how you're going to resolve world hunger. Or you can go and collect food donations and take it to a local food pantry today. It's easy to become overwhelmed with the scale of the problem that you're trying to solve, that you have blinders covering a first step for something that you can do today. So think about your life. What is something that you would like to see made better? And I challenge you to take it one step further. What is something that you can do today to bring yourself closer to seeing that change? Me? It was getting a team and renting those folding tables. Today, I am proud to be a co-founder and the CEO of 321 Coffee, a coffee shop and roaster leading the way in neurodiversity inclusion. 80% of adults with disabilities are unemployed. And we're changing that. We've got a permanent shop. We're open five days a week. We roast our own coffee. We've got over 20 adults on our payroll. And we've got plans for much more. At 321, they're roasting the coffee. They're taking the orders. They're steaming the milk on your latte. They are running this shop. And together, we are showing and leading the way of what an inclusive business model can look like for other companies to follow. We started with folding tables and a dream to build something better. And we're building it. So what about you? What will you make? Because if you want to make things better, go out and make a better thing. Because we can all remember what we learned in kindergarten. Don't just be a tattletale. In kindergarten, I could have gone to the teacher. I could have said, those students are being mean and exclusive, and they deserve a timeout. In college, I could have gone to the media. I could have said those companies are being mean and exclusive and they deserve to be punished. But this is just complaining. And it's easy to complain. It's easy to point and say that's wrong. But complaining and criticism without action isn't doing anything. It's important to recognize areas of shortfall, but in order to truly create change, you need to practice the better and demonstrate a new way. So whether you're in the boardroom or a classroom, in the hallway or on the sidewalks, impact starts with one. One person taking action on what they believe in and doing the right thing can create a ripple effect and lead to immense impact. So when you want to make things better, make a better thing. Thank you.